Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton. So what exactly is this cytoskeleton? See in our body, we are having skeleton, right? Which gives the uh, shape to our body. The same way, cell also have its own shape, right? To maintain the shape and structure, it also have its own skeleton. So that's what is called as a cytoskeleton. So the cytoskeleton function is, now you already know it, it gives shape to the cell, it gives shape to the cell. Now, what are the different types of cytoskeleton? Okay, different uh, structures which are present in the cells which are acting like a cytoskeleton. What are they? Cytoskeleton includes microtubules. So microtubules are a part of cytoskeleton. Microfilaments and intermediate filaments. Okay, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. See, out of all these three, one is not going to grow, and other two are going to grow continuously, which means with the cell ages okay as the cell is getting aged as the cell is growing the cytoskeleton also grows which means it is dynamic in nature it's not static so two of the cytoskeletal structures are going to grow along with the cell but the other one is not going to grow so who is going to grow microtubules they are dynamic microfilaments are also dynamic but intermediate filaments they are static Okay, they are static. Now, out of all these three, who is more abundant in the cell? Okay, most abundant cytoskeletal structure is intermediate filament. They are most abundant. Okay, but who is more stronger? See, we have divided the cytoskeleton into microtubules, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, mainly based on their size. See, microtubules are having a bigger diameter. They are biggest and they are the most strongest. So, they are the strongest. Microtubules are biggest and strongest. Now, let's begin with the microtubules. Important points about the microtubules. Sir, microtubules, they are made up of what? Okay, microtubules, whatever were there. So, this microtubule structure, for example, imagine this is the microtubule. Okay, sir, this microtubule, it's made up of what? It's made up of tubulins. Okay, so there are different types of tubulins. Alpha tubulin, beta tubulin, gamma tubulin. Okay, simply microtubules, they are made up of tubulin, protein called as a tubulin. Okay, now one more point is that this microtubules, they are having two terminals, one positive terminal and one negative terminal. Okay, so positive terminal will be there and negative terminal will be there. So what exactly is this positive terminal represents? Sir? What exactly is that? Positive terminal. See, I have already said you, these are dynamic filaments. Dynamic filaments in the sense, they are kept on growing. So imagine, this is a microtubule, okay, which, which is present in the cell. It is giving the stru uh, structural integrity to the cell, okay. Now, one end is considered as a positive, which means this end kept on grows by the adding of the tubulin molecules. Now, this end is kept on growing. So that end which grows is called as positive terminal, okay. Done, sir. Now, next. What else I want you to know regarding the microtubules is, see these microtubules, they are not only giving the shape to the cell, they are also involved in the cellular transport, okay, intracellular transport. For example, imagine here is one cell, inside this cell, there is this microtubule, for example, say there is this microtubule, positive end, negative end, microtubules, microtubules are like this, okay, microtubules, these are all the microtubules like this. They are like a framework, okay, but I used to remember microtubules just like a highway. Okay, microtubules are just like a bridge. On bridge, who is going to move? Vehicles are going to move. There is transport going on on the bridges. So, I used to remember these microtubules as a bridges on which a molecular motors. Okay, there are molecular motors moving. Okay, molecular motors moving. So, what are the examples of the molecular motors? Sir, imagine this is a microtubule. Okay, this is the microtubule. Now, on the microtubule, molecular motors are moving and they help in the transport of the substances within the cell. So, what are the examples of these molecular motors? 
molecular motors include dynein okay dynein and kinesin so the dynein and kinesin molecules they are the molecular motors i used to remember dr we are the doctors right so i used to remember something like dr so dr stands for what so dynein helps in retrograde okay dynein helps in see dynein helps in retrograde cargo okay retrograde cargo or retrograde transport kinesin helps in anterograde okay anterograde cargo now you will get it out sir what exactly is this retrograde cargo and what exactly is anterograde cargo or anterograde transport is see if imagine this is a microtubule here i am showing the microtubule in a single line this is a microtubule it's having positive terminal and negative terminal if a substance is being transported from positive towards the negative side okay so that's the dynein see this is the dynein this is the molecular motor dynein this is going to carry the substances in the vesicle here is the vesicle okay these are the vesicle which is having lot of substances now it is moving towards the negative side if a molecular motor is moving towards the negative side then it is called as a retrograde cargo or if a molecular motor it actually walks it actually walks like this by the usage of gtp if it moves towards the positive terminal then it is called as a anterograde cargo so there is something called as a retrograde cargo and anterograde cargo on the microtubules with the help of dynein and kinesin these are the molecular motors so okay cargo is being transported now what i want you to know for your exam is sir there are certain viruses like rabies polio tetanus so rabies virus polio virus and tetanus virus okay rabies virus polio virus and tetanus toxin not virus tetanus toxin see these substances once they enter into the body for example say how you will get the rabies okay from the rabbit dog there is a rabbit dog and it's going to come and bite now that rabies virus is going to first come into into this area but rabies will go and affect your central nervous system it will go into the hippocampus how from here how that rabies virus is being transported via the blood no rabies first enters into the neurons now the neurons via the neurons via the retrograde cargo it goes into the central nervous system via the retrograde cargo the rabies virus enters into the central nervous system in the same way polio virus and tetanus toxin also enters act gets access into the central nervous system via the retrograde cargo okay retrograde cargo and who is helping in the retrograde cargo always remember doctor so dynein helps in retrograde cargo kinesin helps in anterograde cargo now not only that what else i want you to know is that this microtubules what is the what is the other function of the microtubules see i let me show you one image so that you will have a better understanding see what what i am drawing here see these are the chromosomes which are lying on the equatorial plate something like this now what exactly i am showing you see right now the cell division is happening during the cell division okay here are the centrioles these are the microtubules right with the help of microtubules the dotted lines whatever i am drawing from the centrioles whatever the microtubules see the microtubules are going to form see these microtubules are the ones which helps in separation of the chromosome into two poles while the cell is getting divided now you have to separate the chromosomes after the chromosomes after the dna replication now you have to break this chromosomes and you have to separate them for that process again microtubules microtubules are the one which helps in the separation okay so if you can inhibit this microtubule in uh, formation if you inhibit the microtubule formation cell division is going to occur no cellular division so in which conditions you don't want the cell division to occur in which conditions you don't want cell division it's in the cancers in the cancers you don't want the cell division to occur right so in treating in the treatment of cancers or that anti cancer drugs whatever we are going to use it they can inhibit microtubule formation so what are they micro tubule inhibitors can be used as anti cancer drugs so what exactly are they vincristin vincristin vinblastin and colchicin okay these all these are anti cancer drugs are microtubule inhibitors these are microtubule inhibitors which can act as a anti cancer drugs and colchicin they can be also used in the treatment of 
acute gout can be used in the treatment of acute gout so these are some important points which i want you to know regarding microtubules microfilaments not much important points are there microfilaments the examples of the microfilaments are actin and myosin see this actin and myosin they are not only present in the skeletal muscles you know the actin and myosin help that the sliding filament theory helps in the muscle contraction you know that stuff see this is a different actin and myosin okay these are the cytoskeletal actin and myosin which is giving the integrity to the cell structure these are different things okay so actin and myosin they are examples of microfilaments and what are the important points about the intermediate filaments see intermediate filaments are going to be specific okay specific to the cell which means for example if i am talking about keratin keratin is an example of intermediate filament it will be present only in particular type of cells keratin is present in a particular type of cell glial fibrillary acidic protein it's an intermediate filament it's present in a particular type of cell so they are specific but microfilaments actin and myosin they are present in all the cells microtubules are present in all the cells but intermediate filaments are specific let me write here inter intermediate filaments okay intermediate filaments they are specific now the first intermediate filament which i want you to know for your exam is keratin keratin sir so keratin it is present in which cells specifically it is only only present in epithelial cells it is present in epithelial cells now how this is going to be helpful for us see now i am giving you a cancer okay there is a some cancer mass and i want you to know whether this cancer is coming from which cell it is deriving from which cell see if it's a cancer which is arising from the epithelial cell we are going to call them as carcinomas right carcinomas are the cancers which are arising from the epithelial cells so carcinomas definitely going to have which filament keratin filaments inside them so keratin is a tumor marker of it's a tumor marker of squamous cell carcinomas okay so squamous cell carcinomas that tumor marker is going to be keratin so you will be seeing keratin pearls in the cells inside the cancerous cells okay something like that next the next type of intermediate filament is called as desmin so desmin it's a tumor marker of so desmin first of all i want you to know desmin is present in which cells it is only only present skeletal muscles skeletal muscles so if you are having a cancer which is arising from the skeletal muscles then definitely those cells are going to be positive for the desmin so it's a tumor marker of skeletal muscle cancer is called as rhabdomyosarcomas okay so rhabdo myo sarcomas so for rhabdomyosarcoma the tumor marker is desmin next intermediate filament is called as g fab g fab so what exactly is g fab stands for glial fibrillary acidic protein okay glial fibrillary acidic protein so glial fibrillary acidic protein it's a a uh, intermediate filament which is present in the astrocytes the glial cells okay so astrocytes which are going to form the blood brain barrier okay blood brain barrier now if the patient is having some tumor of astrocytes like pilocytic astrocytoma or glioblastoma multiforme these are the tumors of astrocytes so in which cells or in which cancers the glial fibrillary acidic protein is going to be present our glial fibrillary acidic protein is a tumor marker of pilocytic astrocytoma so which is usually seen in the children the mural tuber the mural nodule which is present in the cerebellum okay that's a pilocytic astrocytoma which is seen in the children it's a astrocytoma of the children there is one more astrocytoma that's a grade 4 astrocytoma more cancerous deadly thing that is called as glioblastoma multiforme okay glioblastoma multiforme it's going to be a cancer of the astrocytes a grade 4 tumor okay uh, which is also called as a butterfly glioma 
that's also a cancer of astrocytes okay next intermediate filament is a vimentin vimentin it is present in fibroblast intermediate filament present in fibroblasts okay are present in connective tissue cells connective tissue cells so it's a tumor marker of cancers of connective tissue in origin okay connective tissue in origin so in those cancers which are arising from the connective tissue those cells vimentin is going to be present so at the end of the day what i want you to know is sir intermediate filaments which are more abundant in number these intermediate filaments there are different types of intermediate filaments here i have discussed the most important ones like keratin desmin gfap and vimentin they are specific to different types of cells and examples of uh, microfilaments are actin and myosin these are not the actin myosin which are going to cause the muscle contraction they are present in all the cells which are giving the integrity structural integrity to the cell and microtubules are the strongest and they are dynamic and microtubules they are not only giving the shape and structure to the cell but they are also involved in the process of cell division and also involved in the process of cellular transport within the cell okay via the anterograde and retrograde cargo so with this we have completed the topic of cytoskeleton hope the video is helpful thank you